Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to the channel. Just wanted to share my experience so far about charging at home and the two times that I supercharged during my trip to Seattle, what I used and all that good stuff. So let's jump into it. There are some upfront costs to have home charging station in your garage. I purchased my Tesla wall charger via tesla.com a month prior to delivery. You can either install the charger yourself if you know how or in my case, hire an electrician to come out and install it for you. My upfront costs are two things. One, Tesla wall connector for $425, and two, an electrician who charged me $500. A grand total was just under $1,000. However, electrician prices will vary depending on who you go with, so call around. It could be more, it could be less. So what's the benefit of having a Tesla wall connector at home? Well, you don't have to go to a supercharger station and can charge at the comfort of your own home. It's compatible with all Tesla cars and can charge them up to 44 miles of range per hour. The wall connector features a built-in LED status indicator that tells you when your car is charging and how much charge it has. You can also use the Tesla app to monitor your charging status, set charging schedules, and even preheat or cool your car before you leave. Or you could use the touchscreen inside your car to set the percentage you want. Tesla recommends for all-wheel drive vehicles to keep the battery under 90% and I've been doing it right at 90. Pretty much every time when I'm driving back home, I am too lazy to stop anywhere to pump gas and just want to go home. And when I do, I usually look at my gas tank just to see if I have enough gas for tomorrow or not. It's been great the past two months where I don't think about it anymore. It just saves you time. To use the Tesla wall connector, Press and hold the button handle to open the port and simply plug it into the car. Once plugged in, you'll see a blue Tesla logo blink once and it should turn green shortly where it'll start blinking as well. That lets you know that it is charging correctly. You can also look inside your car touchscreen to see how much time is left before the completion of your charging. Tesla supercharging is pretty straightforward in my opinion. There's two ways you can do this. You can look for this on your Tesla app under location and look for your nearest supercharging stations. The app will tell you how many stations are available and what the maximum kilowatt it can charge up to. Once you locate the location you want to go to, simply select the location and send it to the car on your app. Once you go to the car, navigation will route you to that supercharging station. And the other option is your Tesla touchscreen. Simply look at the map and touch the circle lightning bolt icon to bring up supercharging stations. Select your destination, touch the send icon, and navigation will start. There are well over 40,000 superchargers in the U.S. and depending on where you live, access could be everywhere. I live in Portland, Oregon, and there are about 5 supercharging stations within the Portland area and anywhere between 4 to 16 stalls at each station. And just like the app, the touchscreen will tell you how many stalls are available at the supercharging station so you could plan your trip accordingly. Charging your Tesla at a supercharging station is just like at home. The only difference is you'll be charged directly to your credit card on file, so make sure you have that info on there prior to going to a supercharging station. You can locate that under your app, account, charging, manage payment, and you should be able to add your credit card info there. When you do charge your car at a supercharging station, you simply just plug in and sit in the car and wait. If it's going to take a little while, say 20 to 30 minutes, and it might depending on how low your battery is, you can watch YouTube videos, Netflix, or anything you want. But typically, charging stations are near an area where there are amenities used so you could take a walk around the area to use the restroom or even shop. Whatever you want to do is up to you. I have not charged my car outside of Tesla supercharging station or my home as of yet. The J1772 charging adapter is included with every Tesla vehicle at delivery. So you can use this at a non-Tesla charging station if needed. I would highly recommend that you keep it in your vehicle at all times, just in case you need it. So I do use a third party app called Tessy. I mainly got this so I could use it on my Apple Watch, but one of them is tracking my driving distance and cost. I feel like it's a bit more intuitive and easier to look at than my Tesla app. So that's what I'm showing here. On the left side of the screen, you can see how much it costs for the two supercharging I did when I drove up to Seattle. 
depending on the time you go, rates are different, so keep that in mind. Since Tesla no longer includes a mobile connector for all Tesla since late 2022, I don't have one. I have a 2023 model. I may get one in the future, but not right now, since I don't travel as much. However, if you are one to travel often, I would get one just in case. It costs around $230 as of this video. The mobile connector from Tesla can charge up to 3 miles per hour, which is not a lot, but if you do need some extra range overnight to ease your range anxiety, it could help. Hopefully you found this video useful, and if you've gotten this far, I would appreciate a like or subscribe to help the channel. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.